got to be honest with you guys, when I first started trying to put together a list or thinking about putting together a list of 24 books to read in 2024, I was coming up blank. I had no idea what I wanted to be doing next year. And that is until I started to get really motivated about projects and goals for my channel in 2024. And this TBR has essentially been put together with those goals in mind. <laughs> I'm not actually filming a goals video for 2024 and I've talked about this quite a bit in the last few videos that I posted on my channel essentially because I just have all of these ideas that I want to work on. So because I'm not posting a goals video while we are talking about what I want to read in 2024, I thought that I would let you guys know four quantifiable standards that I want to be consistently meeting throughout the entirety of 2024. So when it gets to the end of the year, I will know if I'm on track for my goals, like which ones I need to be working on throughout the year so that it doesn't get to the end of the year where I realize like I have so much catching up to do. I'll know how it's going from the very beginning of the year and all the way through. So we are going to be focusing on sequels and a backlist next year and I know I say this all the time but the point of these quantifiable standards is that I can actually keep track and not think that I'm doing well when I'm actually doing terribly. So the first standard that I would like to consistently meet is to read more books than I haul. I'm not putting myself on a book buying ban. It just will not work for me. There's too many exceptions. So what I have to do is I have to be reading more than I'm hauling. This is cumulative as well. So if I read 10 books in January and haul five books, and then if I haul 10 books in February and read five books, we would still break even because it is the total of all of the months together. The second standard that I would like to meet is to read twice as many sequels as series that I start. I know that I'm going to be starting series next year because I am constantly doing it, but I would like to read twice as many sequels. This is something that I actually had in place low key for this year, just to see how I went. And I was actually on track at the midpoint of the year and then it kind of nosedived throughout the second half. The third and fourth are very similar. If you guys watch my wrap ups, then you will know that at the beginning, I share my stats with you guys. And one of the statistics I have is the places where I acquired the books that I'm consuming from. And two of these sections are hold books and own TV. TBR. Own TBR is books that I owned prior to the start of the year and hold are ones that have been hauled in the year. So as it currently stands in 2023, 35% of the books that I have read are ones that I have hauled in the year, which ain't too bad. And then 50% of the books that I've read are from my own TBR that existed prior to the start of the year. Once again, not too bad. The rest of the percentage is made up of like Audible, Scribd, Kindle Unlimited, that kind of thing. I would like my third quantifiable standard to be the amount of books that I've read that I've hauled throughout the year to be 25% or less. So a 10% reduction. And I would like the amount of books that I'm reading from my own TBR to be 60%, so a 10% increase. I feel like that's doable. It's not too much different than what I'm doing now, but it is a step in the right direction. So with those in mind, let us crack on with the 2024, 2024, 2024 books I wanna read this year. Could you imagine a book for every year? No, <laughs> let's crack on. With the 24 books I would like to read in 2024, you know what's really nice about the number 24? It breaks down into three real easy. So pretty much everything I have for you guys is broken down into three. And with that in mind, we're gonna start with the, the ultimate three because I would like to read three trilogies next year. Like I said, I don't wanna start too many series, but if I am, they should be series where I own the entirety of them. Something I also really want to do is to stop putting off books that I think I'm gonna love. Read them if you think you're gonna love them. Like life is too short, what am I waiting for? I'm finding a lot of times that I'm picking up series that at one point I thought I was gonna adore. And at this point in my life, I don't feel like I'm gonna love them anymore. And like enough is enough, just read what you enjoy. So with that in mind, these are three series deep from my backlist that I think I'm gonna love. The first one is The Remnant Chronicles by Mary E. Pearson. This one is a fantasy romance series. I'm pretty sure it's YA, but I have a feeling it's more of like a YA to new adult or upper YA series. So I still think I'm really gonna enjoy it. So this one I'm pretty sure is about potentially a princess or somebody who has been tied into a marriage with a prince. I think that she runs away from the wedding and two people follow her. One of them is the prince that she was set to marry. And one is an assassin that has been tasked with killing her. And 
and you as the reader do not know which one is which. This is one that a lot of people really loved back in the day. At the time, it didn't have a UK publisher. I believe that it does now, but it's about time that I got into this because I have had this box set for a couple of years and then it's been on my TBR of generally things that I want to read for at least, I would say, six years. So it's been a long time. One that I have definitely owned for a long time, I would say that I've owned this one for at least five years, I think is the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series by Lainey Taylor. I adore the Strange the Dreamer duology and I have had these since I read Strange the Dreamer in the year that it was released. So it's about time that I got to them. This one is about a girl who, is she part demon? She's called Karu and she has blue hair. I'm not sure about her, like whether she's some kind of creature, but I know that she's an art student in Prague by day and by night she is an errand girl for a creature. I think there's like a door between worlds in this. And I love Lainey Taylor's writing, so I've wanted to get to that for such a long time. I just, I know I'm gonna love that. I would be very surprised if I didn't. And it's about time that I prioritized it. And then the last one, these ones are new special editions. These are the Fairy Loot special editions, but I have actually had the paperbacks of these once again for at least four years, but probably longer. And that is the Chronicles of Ixia by Maria V. Snyder. Now I know that this isn't like solidly a trilogy because it does continue. There's like nine or 12 books in this series as a whole, but they're all broken down into smaller series. So I would like to start with the first three and see what happens. This one, I believe the first book is Poison Study and it is about a girl who is going to be executed for something and she's saved at the last minute to be the food tester for potentially the king and so she starts to learn about poisons in her role as the king's food taster. I think that the love interest in this one, because it's once again fantasy romance, is a captain of the guard or something like that. And I'm a sucker for a captain of the guard. Like, I can't lie. I don't even know if that's correct. Okay, so she is the food taster for the commander and the love interest, I believe, is the chief of security. So that's nine books down. And we're gonna knock out another nine real quick because I am nothing if not a realist. And while I can't promise you guys that I'm gonna read all of the books on this list, if I add some books I definitely know I'm gonna read, then I know that I'm at least headed in the right direction. So we are going to add some book club picks. Like I said, everything is in threes and I have three books for each of the three book clubs that I host or co-host. Now, my Patreon book club, the Alpha Ho book club, is a fantasy romance book club where we read entire series and and the books for January, February, and March are the last three books in the Savage Land series by Stacey Marie Brown. So this one is a almost like dystopian post-apocalyptic kind of fantasy romance where we're following a girl who lives in the human realm and she was born at the same time that the veil between the worlds of the Fae and humans fell. So there was a war that followed this and the result was that the world was split into two with the humans on one side and the Fae on the other. Our main character character is the daughter of some important general related to these wars and after her father died she became the ward of the king. Now from her position of privilege she steals goods and drugs from trains that transport them from the human to the face side of the world and she puts them on the black market where like the people who need them have access to them and can make money from them instead of the profit like lying in the pockets of the elite and one day when she is on one of these trains she gets caught at the checkpoint into the face side of the world and thrown into a maximum security prison. So these books are like nothing life-changing, but they are super addictive and really quick reads. I'm really excited to see how this kind of wraps up. It's very repetitive with the same kind of events happening over and over again, but it is definitely a good time and I know that I'm gonna get these read. Next up, I'm going to add three catch-up book club books, but not the next one that I'm reading because I feel like it made sense to add a trilogy. And so I'm going to be adding the Age of Madness trilogy by Joe Abercrombie, which is the last three books to date in the First Law universe. I currently only own Little Hatred, but I have to read this trilogy, so I will definitely be getting the next two books at some point. I cannot remember what they're called, but I will find out in the future. And if you are unfamiliar with the First Law universe, I guess, it is a grimdark series that is pretty grim. Like, it's just 
sad. It's really sad and demotivating at times. So it's broke up into two trilogies and in between the two trilogies there's three standalones and a collection of short stories. So this second trilogy actually follows people related to the first trilogy. I'm gonna estimate around 15 to 20 years after the end of the first trilogy. I'm really excited because these characters are connected to the characters from the original trilogy and that trilogy still does remain to be my favourite first law books that I've read so far. But the first law trilogy to start us out is essentially about a northern barbarian, a fencing champion and a torturer who are kind of, you start off just like learning about them as they are gradually pulled into a larger plot that concerns the first of the magi because there is magic in this world as well. And then on the background of that there is war brewing between the Union which is the country where we spend the most of our time and both the north and the south at the same time and the union are struggling because while they could go to war with one and probably win going to war with both is outside of their capabilities and then you'll know the next thing I'm going to add are going to be the next three Wheel of Time books. Once again, I do not currently own these. I am actually planning on ordering these by the end of the year because I'm currently reading Lord of Chaos and I'm really enjoying it actually and I just kind of want to get stuck straight into book seven. But the three books I'm going to be adding to this list are books seven, eight and nine. We will end up reading six Wheel of Time books in total throughout the year but I don't want it to become like overwhelmingly book club books. I just want to give myself a bit of a boost, you know. It's 20 plus slots is a lot of slots to fill. But the books that we're going to be adding are A Crown of Swords, The Path of Daggers and Winter's Heart. I believe that these are some of the shorter Wheel of Time books as well, which is great because the one that I'm currently reading is like seven pages shy of a thousand. But the Wheel of Time series is a classic epic fantasy tale of the struggle between light and dark. So with every age, there's a war between the dark and the light. And at the moment, the dark is winning. So we are following the Dragon Reborn, who is a legendary figure that is reincarnated incarnated into every era. This time around we're following like this group of farmers from this really quiet like backwater town who are scooped up and kind of put on this path to greatness because one of them is the Dragon Reborn and we're following them as they grow into their roles in this struggle between light and dark. It has a lot of the elements that you would expect from it but it has like a really really good plot in like Robert Jordan's plot in is super intricate and can be traced back through multiple books and while I don't think he has the most compelling writing or the most likable characters I'm definitely I don't know whether I'm just like I've been reading this so long that I'm now convinced that I like it but at this point of book six I'm finally like actually really invested <laughs> in the story so we'll see what books seven eight and nine hold because I know a lot of people do regard them to be like the slowest point in, in the series and man if we had some slow points already. That's 18 books down and with the final six on this list we are going to be tackling sequels. Our first group of three are going to be duologies that I would like to finish and there are more than three duologies that I'm currently reading where I could literally read one book and be done. Tell me how I'm six books into Wheel of Time and I can't finish a duology. Tell me how because it is so frustrating in. and every time I look at a book that's the second book in a duology I get annoyed at myself because I could literally read one book and take a series straight off my list. So the first duology I would like to finish in 2024 is The Blood Gift by N.E. Davenport. This one is the sequel to The Blood Trials I think which is an adult fan no it's an adult sci-fi duology that was compared a lot to Red Rising and it does have some of those vibes in it. But we are following a young woman called Ikenna who was supposed to be training to be I think they're called Praetorians and she has decided that she's actually going to take a year off because her grandfather has died. Now while she's processing her grief she really wants the time away from this like elite training academy but somebody who is very close to her grandfather actually comes to her and says that he thinks that her grandfather was murdered and so she then decides to go through this Praetorian training program to get close to the biggest suspect in her grandfather's murder. Lots and lots of drama in the first book. I I haven't heard really good things about the second book which is unfortunate because while I thought parts of the blood trials were really rushed and this could benefit with being a trilogy instead of a duology. I was very much anticipating this one but I'm obviously still going to read it and oh god I forgot how small the text is 
in these books. That's tiny. The second duology I would like to finish next year is The Sons of, is it The Sons of Arawaya by Hafsa Faisal, the second book being We Free the Stars. This is a YA duology that I didn't really want to read and it came up as like a Patreon pick. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a go. And I really enjoyed it. It was, despite it being like a complete different culture, different story, different characters, it reminded me a lot of Throne of Glass and that kind of YA fantasy from like, you know, nearly 10 years ago, based on my feelings when I was reading it. And that just like really, really excited me. It does have a romantic plot in here. It is about a girl who is known as the Hunter and nobody knows that she a girl but the world has undergone a phenomenon that has changed the the climate I guess or the environment of all of the different areas of this world so our main character is living in a place that should be really really hot but since this phenomenon it's like it snows and the place where she lives just isn't suited to the cold so like there's a lot of damp the buildings are splitting apart and in between all of the places in this world this like big cursed forest has arisen which stops people from going in it so the hunter or the huntress is the only person who can enter the forest and they are this like legendary figure because of that now i think it is the sultan is looking for somebody to track down an artifact for him so he hires the main character to do do that under the guise that when she finds this artifact the world will go back to normal when really he wants it for his own purposes and so he sends his son who is an assassin after the huntress to kill her and take the artifact from her after she has found it so so excited to get into this i was really impressed by we hunt the flame and i definitely recommend it if you're a big like fan of throne of glass or series from that era and you would like to read something similar and then the last duology i would like to finish is one that has been on my tbr cart for so long like as a priority read and just hasn't been picked up and it is the all of us villains duology by christine lynn herman and amanda foodie so this one is a contemporary fantasy set in it's kind of like an unkindness of magicians by cat howard it's set in a town where all of these powerful magical families live and every so many years they have a tournament where they send like some of the teenagers from each of the families into this tournament grounds where it's like a battle royale style and the last one standing is the one that wins the power for their family going forward up until the next tournament however just before this particular tournament somebody has written a book exposing the town and like all of the magic stuff that happens in it so for this tournament there are a lot of spectators of people who have traveled to the town to watch the tournament go down i really really liked the first book i thought it was super atmospheric which is what i generally expect from christine lynn herman and then i just never continued i was in a bad mental place when i got this book and then it's just never bumped its way up to the top of my priority list since then and then our final set of three are just sequels they're all second books in a series that i'm really really excited about so where i read the first book in 2023 and I really enjoyed it and I really want to continue because I don't want them to fall into the category of series that I left so long that I should probably reread the first book but I don't have time to reread the first book so I'll just start another series instead and the cycle kind of continues you know but the first one is Shadow of Night by a, I nearly said by a discovery of witches by Deborah Harkness so this one is the second book in the All Souls series I do believe there has just been an announcement for the next book in this series although I don't know the details because I'm, I'm not that far in I'm only on book two but this one is a paranormal series about a girl who does she teach at Oxford does she study at Oxford but she is doing a research project she's a witch she comes from a family of witches and she calls forth a manuscript from the library she has a look at it and she puts it back and then all of these like vampires demons and witches start to congregate around her because the manuscript that she called is actually one that's been lost for hundreds and hundreds of years and people have been searching it and they've never been able to find it so they try and convince her to call the manuscript back for them but it's not that simple one of the people who pays a special attention to her during this time is a vampire called matthew and he ends up endeavoring to protect her as more and more people turn up trying to get diana to call this manuscript for them now the best way to describe book one in this series is twilight for adults matthew has a million red flags and while i loved book one i didn't love him at all i really don't like him people do say that he has a lot of character growth which i'm definitely excited to see but it has like the same story beats as twilight like matthew tries to resist diana matthew takes diana to meet his family and i 
eat it up. I cannot lie. It has a ton of history in it as well because Deborah Harkness is actually like has a background as a historian. And those little bits, even though they went over my head a lot of the time because they're talking in depth about time periods and like Templars and all of that kind of thing. I thought that it really added a realism to the story that made me really believe what was going on, which was cool. So I was so excited to get into Shadow of Night. I do know that this one is especially historical and that a lot of people kind of lost their interest in the series at this point. I really hope that isn't me, but at least I'm going and expecting that. The next one is The Exiled Queen by Cinder Williams Chimer, which is book two in the Seven Realms series. This is a YA multi-perspective high fantasy. It has all that good stuff that like all good high fantasies have, like royalty and wizards. The wizards 1000 years ago, there was this very powerful wizard who became known as the Demon King, who kidnapped a, a princess or a queen, I can't remember which one she was, and spirited her away. Now she actually managed to get free and she came back and became like this great historical ruler of this land. And since then the wizard's magic has been tightly controlled by the clan's people to provide balance in the world so another demon king can't arise essentially. One of the main characters we follow in this series is a princess and at this time her mother is getting scarily close to her wizard advisor in a way that is making our main character very suspicious and that could potentially lead to like the destabilization of the 1000 year peace in this kingdom. One of the members of the clans is a pretty prominent character but then our other I would say main character is a a leader of a street gang who is trying to do better and has kind of like turned into a courier instead in order to essentially protect his family from the danger that being like a, a street gang leader entails. Really, really enjoyed book one. Really want to get through the rest of this series. I'm glad as well because this is one of the series that I was really worried. Like I always thought I was going to love it and I was really worried that I'd waited too long and it would get to a point where I actually wouldn't end up loving it because I was too old now and I'm glad that that's not true. I'm so excited now I want to read all of these books but I can't. In December I need to read through everything I currently have on my TBR to leave me with a clean slate to be able to read these books and the last one I have is Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I loved Gideon this year and I'm so excited to get into Harrow and hopefully also Nona. I do believe there's a fourth book, his Electo. I don't know if that has a release date because like with the All Souls series I'm not that far in yet to even be thinking about that. So this is following a woman called Gideon who was pretty much abandoned in the ninth house as a baby and in this world or like solar system there are nine necromantic houses. So Gideon absolutely hates the ninth house because they don't treat her very well and all she wants to do is escape. So how Harrow, who is like the daughter of the ninth house, like the heir, if you will, comes to Gideon and says that Gideon can have her freedom, providing she accompanies her in this competition to become, I think they're called lectors, but they're like legendary immortal warriors. So Gideon agrees and she goes with Harrow to the first house where this competition is taking place, along with all of the representatives from all of the other houses. And they're kind of left in this sprawling, crumbling castle with one cryptic clue to go off and they have to like figure out what they're doing from there and everything starts to go awry when a couple of characters turn up dead. I'm so excited to get back into this. Every time I think about what book I want to pick up next, it's always Harrow and I haven't done it yet. Like I said, I do want to be better at reading what I actually want to read, but to be able to do that, I kind of have dug myself into a little bit of a hole where I have a big TBR and because I'm not getting through it fast enough, I'm like rolling things forward constantly. So what I just need to do is knuckle down in December, focus on reading what I have to read and then hopefully spend 2024 reading more of what I want. I say this but I do very much expect this to be derailed in February when I go to Thailand so I don't actually anticipate reading very much in February which could throw a spanner in the works of all of my plans real quick. But those were my 2024 goals and also 24 books that I would like to read in 2024. Down in my comments please let me know if any of these would be on your list of 24 books to read in 2024. Let me know what you think about my goals as well. As well as the goals themselves as I'm wanting to maintain them throughout the year. I do also have content planned to contribute towards that goal so that I can hopefully provide a variety of entertaining like vlog content that is also productive because 
it moves me towards all of these goals while not being you know like the same thing over and over again like there's variety there it's all it's all in here I have a brainstorm map as well and aside from that the rest is in here so I really should actually write that down properly at some point but if you would like to let me know that you were here but you don't really know what to say you can leave a like party popper or party streamer emoji down in my comments because that feels very like new year vibes you know but aside from that guys please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to if you head to my description box you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as link to my bookish candle website the Etsy for that and a 10% off discount code but that's it from me today guys bye oh you bite your friend like chocolate you say you will go where nobody knows with guns hidden under our petticoats we're never gonna quit it no we're never gonna quit it no